The first time when I learned KiCad, I was very, very excited to manufacture the PCB. So after doing the schematic, I hardly went ahead, designed some PCB layout and manufactured it. And then all the troubles began. I had the footprint wrong or even the manufacturer part number wrong. The connectors were a bit off that I couldn't assemble it together. And also the PCB itself to looked very, very tiny as compared to what I had imagined. You know, when you're designing the PCB on a monitor, it, you're always zoomed in. Hence, in today's video, I want to cover some mistakes that I went through and hopefully some learning lessons that we can do some steps uh, when we have completed the schematic, but before we start the PCB layout. And for the purpose of this video, I want to constrain it to small volume. For example, one to 10 units, maybe we can stretch it to a hundred units, but beyond that for high volumes, I think the process of uh, gathering the footprints or the logistics and the supply chain of delivering the parts are completely different. So the very first important step to consider is the manufacturer part number or the complete manufacturer part number or MPN that we associate with each of the schematic symbol. Through the MPN, we should be able to go through the data sheet and decide on the package type, the ordering code, and the footprint that we will use in the PCB layout. Now, in terms of finding the data sheet, we have to ensure that it is the right one. For example, maybe it is the latest version or at least the data sheet that is linked to the part we have in hand. For example, I'm using the module PA1010D for GPS. And when I searched for the PA1010D data sheet, the first result will give an older data sheet with version V02. But if we go to the manufacturer's website, the linked data sheet will be the most most recent one with V.03. And I manufactured the PCB based on the older data sheet and the pin configuration was wrong. So now that we have ensured that we have the right data sheet at hand, there are three sections to zoom inside the data sheet. Number one is the ordering code, number two is the package type, and the number three is the mechanical dimensions. So let's look at the example, say the IC AP2112, which is an LDO regulator. It is a fairly popular LDO used in many Adafruit dev boards. So I bought it some time ago to use it in my projects as well. So let's search for the part in my home lab's stock list with parts box. And it seems like we have about 40 of them. But what does the complete manufacturer part number mean? Now in the section ordering information of the data sheet, K means sort 23.5-3.3 3 .3 means fixed output at 3.3 volts. TR means tape and reel. And finally, G1. So for some parts like AP2112, there are many, many variants as shown in this table. And hence, it is even more important that we are very specific about the complete part number. So once again, here's the complete part number that I have. Package sort 23.5, temperature range, 3.3 volts, marking ID, G3P with tape and reel. But what does this this G1 mean? I mean, at first I couldn't really find the answer, but uh, thankfully it was explained at the bottom of the complete parts table. All the products are basically lead free and G1 means that they are ROS compliant and green. And once again, upon searching for ROS and green, I finally found the information that green also means that the products are halogen free along with being ROS compliant. So now that we have the complete manufacturer part number and the footprint, we can then come to our electronics design software, KiCad in this case. So let's edit the symbol fields with this icon in the menu, add a new column called MPN and key in the complete manufacturer part number for future buying and sourcing. And when we try to edit the part individually, we will also be able to see the details of the part such as the link to the data sheet and the complete manufacturer part number. And finally, we will assign the PCB footprint to the schematic symbol with this symbol in the menu. And uh, let's choose the footprint library on the left, package TOSOT SMD. And the footprint in this case is U1. 
and right above we will use the filters to search by pin count the library name and partial name which i will put as sort 23 phi okay so i will choose maybe the second footprint for hand soldering and let's view this footprint now looks okay to me and uh, let's assign it to the schematic symbol so AP2112 has a standard package, which is SORT235 in this case, but sometimes these packages are absolutely non-standard. Let's refer to data sheet once again. For example, the GPS module PA1010D's data sheet shows the mechanical dimensions of this non-standard package. So I referred to it to create a completely new footprint from scratch. In KiCad, we can add this footprint by going to the menu Preferences, Manage Footprint Libraries, choose the Project Specific Libraries, the second tab, and then add a new row and find the newly created footprint. So now we can return to the schematic, choose the menu item, assign footprints to the schematic symbol, find the footprint library name, which I put as cdtop p 10 d GPS in this case. And let's choose the designator U4 for the GPS module. And once again, we will use the filters above to search by the pin count, the library name, and we will see the filtered footprint, which is only one in this case, because that's what I made. So let's view the footprint once again to confirm. And yes, it matches the data sheet as well. So we will assign this footprint to the schematic symbol of the GPS module. So now that we have the schematic symbols, say the footprint, the manufacturer part number and the dimensions, at least virtually or digitally, we have to ensure that we can get it in our hands physically. If we are manufacturing the PCB for prototyping on small volume, maybe it's already in our internal stock. If not, we will have to go to the e-commerce website to buy it potentially. And all these will help us decide what is the lead time to get that part in time for the PCB assembly. So some of the parts, uh, such as the resistors and capacitors, the common consumables are already available in my internal stock. So let's have a search at it. For example, I'm using four 10 microfarad as a decoupling capacitor. So let's search for a capacitor 0805 10 microfarad in parts box or really wherever you digitally list your internal stock. And the search result shows that I have 50 of them. So I will add them to my current project. And in the bill of materials, I will add quantity four and list them by the designators C5, C6, C10 and C11. So similarly, I also need 300k resistors and this time it shows that I have 60 of them which is enough for my project and uh, let's choose the part add to the project and in the bill of materials I'll add quantity 3 and mention by the designators R9 to R11. So among all the parts it seems like I already have a few parts in my internal stock for prototyping and they are available right now with zero lead time. So at other times if they are not available in our internal stock we might need to go to the e-commerce websites and then order them but once again for high volume manufacturing for 100 or 1000 units we probably have to communicate with the factory or uh, communicate with the manufacturer themselves the process for that is completely different so for example i need a 950 megahertz stub antenna so i went to rs components and uh, as you can see that the search results are showing Showing that uh, well there are a few antennas but it is 433 megahertz instead and one of them is a whip antenna so how about I try digikey and in digikey looks like uh, we have well maybe no no they are once again a different type of antenna how about Mauser so looks like I found one in uh, Mauser let's have a look at it it seems like I found it but let's look at the lead time the lead time is 10 weeks and similarly, I'll search uh, very quickly on element 14 and it seems like I found a couple. One is a right angled one and it is available in three to four business days. And the other one is again not available until the next year, early next year. So you see, I have checked about four different websites for my 950 megahertz stub antenna. And these are the real considerations to have. Sometimes the parts are not available and they will take a few months to arrive so does that mean maybe I can change to the right angled one which is available in three to four days these are some real decisions we need to make and that will impact the PCB layout 
The final thing to consider before we jump into the PCB layout is the mechanical aspect. Do we want to weatherproof our PCB or do we want some water tightness or is there a need to do IP rating on the device? Now we can get into very, very complex rabbit hole issues regarding mechanical, but for this video, I want to restrict it to the minimum effort that can be done. Now we should at least consider the dimensions of the biggest parts, placement of various connectors, parts that are potentially sticking out of the PCB, for example, the antenna and the physical size of the battery the simplest tools we need for a minimum mechanical consideration are the pen, some pieces of cardboard, blue tack or some gluing agent and a ruler. And then I locate the biggest electronic parts. In this project, they are the display module, the ink module, the LoRa module and the GPS module. I also list down these dimensions in a table form after checking their data sheet. For example, the wave share display module is 48 mm by 33 mm. I also include things like JST or USB connectors, the battery and antenna. And now using the cardboard and the ruler, I measure them and cut out pieces of paper to mimic their sizes. After having all the cardboard pieces ready, it is now a game of arranging them. Okay, so seems like I have arranged it and this looks okay to me now. So, hey, I have the paper mock-up right in my hand and really this is the minimum that we can do to have a feel of how the PCB layout will look like. And just for fun, there is a KiCad banana footprint made by Arturo on GitHub that we can also place beside our PCB layout while we design it. This video is about the missing steps I wish I knew before starting the PCB layout and I hoped uh, some of the steps that I discussed helped you as well so that when we eventually get the manufactured PCB in our hands there are a little less errors a little less confusion and uh, hopefully these steps uh, for example checking the data sheet or having the complete manufacture part number will even help us debug when we eventually have some errors with the manufactured PCB. So I hope you learned something and uh, I'm sure I've missed uh, some information as well. So if you have some comments, do drop them in the comment below. For example, what should we consider before doing the PCB layout? And thanks for watching. See you next time.